I am Ben Gardner, co-host of the Backyard Gardens podcast. I'm a documentary filmmaker and a passionate gardener. Our garden is a family effort and we all chip in in our own way. In the gardener house, we grow to cook and cook to grow. This is the Backyard Kitchen. All right, my angelic one, what are we cooking today? We are cooking tuna nachos. Oh yeah? We are cooking tuna nachos, huh? Wiping the bugs away from my face. <laughs> Only in the backyard kitchen do we have bugs flying around. So, tuna nachos, it's, actually it's pretty simple, right? There's, you know, there's minimal cooking, it's just cooking the tuna and then adding some extra ingredients. Um, the concept is sort of new to us. It, it's something that we've eaten for maybe a year or two, but the first time we heard of it, kind we had of it surprised at a restaurant. us. We had it at a restaurant and it was odd. To, to order it, it felt odd. But then when we ordered it and we ate it, it was very much so not odd. <laughs> well, there's no nacho cheese. This is not a Mexican take. This no, is definitely no. a seafood See, I don't yeah. know. Seafood, seafood Japanese, yeah, Japanese, 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 <laughs> Japanese, whatever. Yeah, so as you know, we live close to the beach. We love the water and we're pescatarian. Mm -hmm. So we love nachos normally. So why not combine nachos and fish together? But why not talk, why talk about it when we can just cook it? All right, so the easiest thing about this is all we have to do is cook the tuna. Correct. Season it a little and we'll just season with some salt and pepper. Nice and simple. So I am a big fan of salt and pepper on seasoning stuff anyways. I know when I was eating meat and I would eat steaks and stuff, remember we would just salt with, mm -hmm. with or season with just copious salt. amounts of salt. Yep. Hence the blood pressure. That's genetic. It is genetic. Thanks, mom. Thanks, dad. <laughs> Love you. Um, I, I do like seasoning with the salt and pepper. Also, I think it's worth noting. How do you like your tuna cooked? Well, that is the key. So, do you like it? Well, most people eat it rare. Very rare. What do you like? I like medium rare. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I, uh, I mean, I want it to be pink on the inside, but I just don't want it to be like raw pink. Definitely not well done. No. And when you're cooking it, you can see that, you can see it cooking from the side up. And so you want to flip it. Just It doesn't take long. It doesn't take long I would long say three minutes on each side. Yeah, three minutes on each side. And my, I had a friend, he had um, the people that drove around and they sell meat off the back of their truck. You know what I'm talking about? Like a meat truck? Yeah, like a meat truck. You know what I mean? They have yeah, like little freezers in service. Back. Kind of. It's like, hey, I got this really good deal and I'll cut you a deal right now, but you have to buy 15 pounds of meat. We got ribeyes and steaks and chicken and all this for one low price. Those kinds of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just shut up and get to it. <laughs> <laughs> I can see right through it. The um, I want to know where you're going. I'm going with, he had, he had bought frozen tuna. And he would actually, he bought a big box of it, and he would take it and put it on the grill, just frozen, as a block. Mm -hmm. And then he would cook it. And it, he did a pretty good job. It's a little too yeah. rare for me, but. I feel like your dad does that. Yeah, my dad is famous for that. He, uh, he likes his bloody rare. Mm. So it's. So do you know what ahi tuna is? Is that like a special kind of tuna? Cause I feel like when we had it at the restaurant, it was ahi tuna. No, I think it's just a way to cook it. Yeah. I mean, essentially all you're doing is a hard sear, flipping it, and then another hard sear. Right. So I'm gonna season it again, because, well, first of all, we didn't season this side. But I'm actually gonna flip it one more time and get this seasoning in there. And the magic hasn't even come yet. So the ingredients for this is Really, it's more like an appetizer, but you could definitely make it a whole meal, and I prefer it as a whole meal. But it's one piece of tuna, one tuna steak. One tuna steak, yep. Tortilla chips, Tortilla you're cheesing. Chips, salt and pepper to your, to your liking. And then we have our sesame seeds, sesame seeds, cooking sesame oil. And then the famous 
seaweed salad. Love seaweed salad. Absolutely so, love it. Is it seaweed though? It is not seaweed. Seaweed salad is actually an algae. Do you know what the difference between algae and a plant is? Well, I do, but enlighten everybody else. <laughs> so, <clears throat> algae will photosynthesize throughout every single part of the algae. A plant will only photosynthesize in its leaves. Which is what seaweed <clears throat> is, as a plant. Yeah, like kelp. Kelp has an actual root, so it only photosynthesizes in the thick leafy parts. <clears throat> and tuna is a countercurrent exchanger. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, some marine science thrown some out there. Some marine science. That's what today's all about. Aren't seals countercurrent exchangers too? Seals? But it's, it's even more weird because tuna's a fish. Well, yes, exactly. And a seal's so a mammal. Seals are warm-blooded because they're mammals. It's one of the requirements to be a mammal. Correct. But tuna, as a countercurrent exchanger, means that the blood is going circulating throughout its body and warming as it swims, which is what makes it such a voracious predator and travel long dis distances in cold water. Well, and also the warm blood passes by the yep. cool blood within the, the body. So as one current is cold and the other one's warm, it goes right next to each other and it warms the cooler blood. Exactly. So that they can stay in colder water for longer. Exact the moon That's a great fact. Now you know why we eat fish? We're fish geeks. It's cool. It is cool. Dude, animals are amazing. Okay, so I believe that we are cooked. Okay, so I am a firm believer if you eat, just bring this fish out, put it on the cutting board and let it rest for a few minutes. Amen, sister. It helps let it finish cooking and then um, it also seals in some of the uh, moisture. Yeah, it seals in the juices. Cause the worst thing you can do, especially when you cook like a big piece of meat is to cook it and then cut it because all those juices just pour right out. You want to let it sit. And, yeah. Which I, I feel mm -hmm. like is common knowledge, but I'm not sure. So that's Every, how... Everybody's got a little knowledge on something. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, they do. And I typically like to take my nachos and put them in the oven and brown them first before I or eat Or catch them on fire. It's happened once or twice. Do I eat them? <laughs> not when they've been caught on fire. I have. <laughs> We have run out of the house with burning trays and nacho chips. It's a... Uh, <laughs> it's we a, have. It's a delicate um, balance between a nice burn versus um, straight up fire. Yeah, and our son's like, what's going on? What's going on? You mean I gotta turn off Pokemon? Like, yeah, it's, the house is on fire. Let me get it outside and it's fine. The dog eats it no matter what, so. She sure does. Are them chips good? they are <laughs> so I can't help it seaweed salad if you've never had seaweed salad before now we did not make this and I don't know how you would make it but this is something that we just bought at the grocery store um, over by the little sushi section uh, the main thing about this it's it doesn't have a whole lot of flavor it's got some sesame in it uh, but it will get stuck in your teeth like crazy so have some floss on hand for afterwards all right so i'm super excited about making this food do it man because i'm really hungry Cut and it up. i love this stuff all right so the tuna now i know there's a fancy way where you can touch at least steak and know how well done it is i have no idea how you do that medium. with fish I, all right medium medium it is um so i just go off of time and then when you slice, you want nice thin slices with the grain. Um, and again, if you can't see the little lines in the fish, I can't tell which way the grain is. So I give it a slice and if it slices well, you then- You can see the grain right here on the side of the fish. Right there. Okay, well, we're gonna give this a go and see- Test it out, see if I'm well wrong. How things work out. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. It's a little overcooked a little bit. Well, the the smaller end's medium. This is looking a little closer to medium rare. It's about medium. It's the cook's fault. But that's okay. Well, so- oh, Wait, no it's not, that was me. <laughs> it depends if you start with a frozen piece of fish or if it's totally thawed. In our case, this piece of fish was totally thawed, so. All right, nice thin little slices. And then because it's going on nachos, you may want to cut them down a little smaller, but that's it. We're not shredding the tuna. We're leaving it nice and put together. 
And then you take your regular nacho chips, spread your tuna out on top. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. This piece right here looks dirty. Okay. Poison control. Poison control. And then it's just all about layering everything up. So we've got So what are tuna. you gonna do now? Tuna? I, I'm gonna add some sesame seeds. Okay. I, I don't get sesame seeds. Can we, can we wait a second and talk about this situation? There is no flavor. I think they have flavor. You think so? And they, you got little bits of protein in there. <laughs> I don't know. Here we go with the little bits of protein. If nothing else, it looks pretty. Very little. Very little. Like you ever go and you like, you get a sandwich like, I'd like to have it on a sesame roll. Like I can't really taste the sesame in it. But you can taste an onion roll. Well, what's that got to do? I'm just, <laughs> I don't know. It's like comparing like apples and oranges. It is. I was digging deep for something else, but it didn't come. Oh, I don't know. I, I like sesame, but you know what? I think generally speaking, you're an under taster and I'm an over taster. Well, and so. I, yeah. I, I, I can agree with that. And I also support the fact that you like it and I just deal with it. That's love. Now, what's the difference between black and white sesame seeds? One's black and one's white. Oh, yeah, see, Duh. white and black pepper. I mean. Yeah, the white pepper there's, thing. There's a genius online that talked about that with his mac and cheese. Remember what he say about white pepper uh -huh. and black pepper? It, it's the same. It's just the color, like. Does it really matter? So, and personally for me, I like the look of black pepper in my food. So the one thing I was gonna show you, and we've had this issue, is the seaweed salad has this water in it. And we don't, you don't wanna just dump it on there because then it gets really juicy. Now, what is the secret ingredient? Shh, don't tell nobody though. Hoisin. Hoisin sauce, okay? That stuff is amazing. It's, it adds, you have your sweet and then you have your salty. And this adds the sweet. Yeah. So if you're concerned about your sugar, don't look at the nutrition label though. Well, you'd have to use a substantial amount. You'd have to use at least two tablespoons and we're doing a drizzle, maybe a full tablespoon. Um, and before I put this on, I kind of spread out the tuna and the, um, the seaweed salad because I do not like all my stuff piled in one spot. I want it to be. Oh, so you I want go every there? every yeah. I'll go there because I knew you were gonna bring it up. So all we have I, a tradition. All I, all I want to say is I like every chip to have like a full bite of the food that of the nacho ness that it needs to have. So we have a tradition. Every time we eat nachos, I bring up this situation that occurred at one point, and this is what went down. My lovely wife and I, we had just gotten together and we go out and we get a plate of nachos. And if I'm not mistaken, we had both been out to sea for about probably 14 days or so. So we were ready to get some real food. And we go and we get the nachos and they bring this plate of huge nachos full of everything. And my wife reaches in on the first bite and grabs the nucleus, okay? who? goes in and grabs the middle chip with every single thing on it right away and ever since then i do it's it, i was an only did. child you did and i don't <laughs> share and i want the best part first you damn right and you got it that time but no more now it's a race to see who can get in the middle but i'm gonna yeah. do you i'm gonna do you a solid see but i made no middle that's my strategy now there is no nucleus that is it is a well uh, well separated plate that's uh, it's all drizzled it's all even well you can sit there and wave it around all you want no no you know what today i want you to grab the nucleus because that's my love but there for is you. no nucleus grab one by the design middle. there's no nucleus <laughs> you've overcome i have learned i am your padawan it's so good and the seaweed don't Think of it as seaweed, like when you go to the beach at low tide and it smells funky, Ew, yeah. it is not that at all. It's like, I would never eat that. And you got the salty from the chips, you got the sweet from the hoisin. It's not even fishy flavored. You got, no, and I mean, good fish should never taste fishy. That's a general rule of thumb with anything. Except for salmon. Salmon's kind of a fishy fish. Canned tuna. Well, that's not really fish. 
And I would never put canned tuna on this, just saying. No, that's like a, a totally different level. That's not even like in the realm of this. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, this is, um, it's just delicious. And I think the restaurant that created this idea and I hope that, you know, everybody else sees it and carries on and tries this tradition. If you don't have somewhere that can make it, now you know how to do it yourself. That ain't so. a tradition. It ain't Christmas time. It's well, just nacho. It's, what is it? Tuna chos. Tuna nachos? No, you're thinking of tachos. Tachos. Oh, yeah. Tachos are amazing, though, too, with tater tots. Yeah. But that's that's like... That's next season. Extreme comfort food. <laughs> extreme. <laughs> yeah, this is fairly lean protein pack, so it's good. It's corn, so the hoisin might not be gluten-free, but... No. I don't really know much about I would imagine food, that the hoisin is actually nothing but gluten, if probably. I had to guess. I don't know if that's true, so... Yeah, but it is... It's a delicious little meal. It's light. It's light, but it's satisfying. Except for it gets all hung up in my face. That's a beard. No, my <laughs> lips ain't my beard. <laughs> my wife secretly doesn't like my beard, and we're just going to leave it at that today. So remember, if you're going to make tuna nachos, or any nachos in general, leave the nucleus for the last man standing. That's the proper way to eat nachos. <laughs> And remember, grow some food, cook some food, and always be sweet to your wife because she's there for you all the time. Aww. Bye. Tuna nachos? The reason we call it tuna nachos. And we're gonna tuna do that nachos. again because the gentlemen drove by. We are watching. Damn. We are cooking tuna nachos. <laughs> cha cha!